I would like to call this um, work session to order for July 28th. We will um, dispense of the pledge and the invocation until the regular meeting at seven. And thank you, audience, for coming. <laughs> so I turned it over. All right. Okay. So what we've got going on tonight is the uh, annual budget meeting uh, in July to set the millage, set the public hearing dates, and approve a tentative budget. So uh, and everybody should have hard copies of the presentation there in case it's hard to read up on the, the screen. Um, in that stack there. So we get one. Yeah, it's the second, it's the second one under the OACS. Oh, I was going to ask for a copy of the OACS. Good deal. Okay, gotcha. We made copies of all the uh, presentations for tonight, so you have hard copies. I think that's a great idea. You want to? Oh. Uh, first slide. Oh, sorry. All right, so every July we've got to go through this process. It's the beginning of the trim process for uh, setting the budget for the town. So this is going to set the tentative budget and millage rate for next year's budget. Um, we come back in, in um, September for, with the two public hearings. So what I'm going to do is basically present to the town commission a summary. And you've got the full budgets in your in your agenda package. This is can be a summary um, of the 2021 tentative budget, the millage rate, and the public hearing dates. So the presentation outline sets up like this. It's I'm going to go. Thought this was a great time to just talk about some accomplishments and updates, uh, things that the staff have been working on. Um, so I'll start off with that. Then I'll talk a little bit about how uh, Renee and I put together the budget uh, with the directors, and then we'll go into each of the, the general fund, the utility fund, and impact fees where we'll talk about projects for next year. And then the last slide I'll go over during the work session will be the millage rate and public hearing dates, and then I'll bring up the requested action during the regular meeting for approval. So, and I know this is kind of hard to read, which is why I've got, the, got them in front of you. So. Um, starting off with uh, accomplishments and updates, I just kind of mixed them together, but I wanted to be able to go through and talk about all the things that have been happening with the town since, uh, some of them are since a year ago, some of them are since October, but I just wanted to kind of give you, give you some updates. So I'll start off with the administrative services. Um, our town of Oakland Facebook page, we've seen great growth in that. We've got about a 58% increase in followers, uh, since October of, of 2019. Um, we've implemented the Civic Ready uh, emergency alert system, and at this time we've got, what we did is we downloaded a bunch of the contacts from the utility system that we already had. But right now we have 1,816 contacts into that emergency system that we can then contact uh, during an emergency through email or text messages. Um, we've had the COVID-19 webpage on our site. Uh, we've been publishing the executive orders. Uh, county, town, county, and state information, and doing our best to try to keep the town residents up to date with things going on uh, with the town. Uh, we've got a new residence webpage. Since it's not been as easy to interact with new residents as they're coming in, we've tried to make sure that we've got all the uh, uh, information that we had in those welcome bags, that we've got all that available to them on, the, on this webpage. Uh, we've been working on the census. Um, and Alicia's done a great job with that. We've had 32 census-related social media posts. We've sent mailers out. We've got the two banners at Tub Street. Um, we've increased our response rate by 15% since May, and we're getting ready to, to push again uh, mid to early to mid-August, uh, trying to figure out when the best time is with the, uh, the election coming up. But we're going to try to make another push with another mailer and some signs. Um, and we're also uh, working with the Census Bureau. They're going, the Orange County group is going to do training here, I believe starting on Thursday. Um, they're gonna use the meeting hall for a week or two to train the enumerators that'll be out knocking on doors. 
Um, we've done the Historic African American Cemetery Grant, which shows up here and also shows up on planning because they work together on putting that together. Um, we're working on an Oakland archive as part of the Arts and History Center. Um, and connection with the Healthy West Orange Arts and Heritage Center, the town is building a digital database of Oakland's past residents and institutions. Uh, the foundation of the database is Oakland's three historic cemeteries and U.S. Census records uh, through 1940. So we've already been doing a lot of research and putting together uh, some, some information, historic information. I think a lot of what we're going to end up doing here is going to be digital uh, versus what the Heritage Foundation does in Winter Garden because they have places to store actual artifacts. But I think we have a real opportunity here in the town to, to really collect a lot of digital archives. And they're going to store our significant artifacts for us, right? Yes, yes. But as far as what, what we can manage um, here, a lot of it will be digital. And as a point of reference, we have one of the, I think, don't think I told you this, one of the church's original going yeah. in. Okay. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. And I didn't introduce, I'm sorry, Elise, who is our town clerk. So, okay, go ahead. And then uh, the, all the work we've been doing with the Healthy West Orange Arts and Heritage Center, uh, the unique branding, the web page, the signage, and everything that's going on with that. Um, so that covers the, uh, and then the last couple of things, um, we did do a, a rather, you know, I thought it was a really great state of the town uh, last fall. Uh, we had the volunteer appreciation dinner, and then Light Up Oakland was a big success back in December. And let's hope we can do those again this year. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're evaluating how things are going to look. We've still got time to do that. Um, Evaluate. Absolutely. Town clerk, uh, one of the big huge accomplishments is, is getting everything to be ADA accessible uh, on our website. Um, and uh, that, that actually takes a whole lot of time, but at least it's become the expert on making sure that happens. Um, we've coordinated, at least has coordinated work sessions with ARB and planning and zoning. We've had a, a couple of joint work sessions with them pre-COVID. Uh, we've had virtual and hybrid meetings for ARB, planning and zoning, and the town commission. And then uh, she's done a lot of work with our business tax receipt process and streamlining that and improving that. So. Um, that, that, there's a bit, some big, huge accomplishments there. Uh, finance, we now have 1,392 residential utility accounts, an increase of 241 accounts in the last 12 months. Uh, the use of the e-bill e process has increased from 80 to 201 people are getting their bills by email, which reduces costs for us as far as mailing. I love that. It is, it's, I think it's great. Maybe, maybe we should do some testimonials. <laughs> And by the way, this month it was 216, this last billing. So that's how much it makes in a, in a month. Uh, in, in the same respect, uh, the ACH, uh, pain to ACH has also increased. Um, Renee's working hard on the conversion from AccuFund to uh, Smart Fusion, the, the new financial software that we're working with. And I'm excited about that because the ability to run reports and do comparisons and, and look at stuff is going to be a whole lot better with the, the new program. Are you looking for people that's been on ACH to switch to the e-bill system instead? e bill is just, instead of you getting the postcard with your bill, oh, okay. it does a, a payment. What, how are we doing on, can people pay for that on, online? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you prefer to get off of ACH and go to yeah. the I think ACH, ACH is first, and then the other other ones are great. But ACH is like an automatic thing, and, and so people don't forget they're not late. I think right. I think and don't forget there's a cost associated fee with a credit card, so you wouldn't want to do that every month, really. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, so ACH has a credit card fee? No. 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 Does it? ACH does not, if you decide not to do ACH and do the credit card for the website, then there is a fee. ACH is wonderful. Yeah, set it and forget it. Um, anyway, so Smart Fusion, I, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, I think that's going to be huge. Um, we uh, just got through working with Mike Van Jolson on the audit. Uh, a lot of positives out of the, the latest audit. We continue to work on the past comments. 
we're whittling them down. We've got a couple more that we're going to knock off with the next audit. But um, those, uh, the audit was, was really good. And he's coming in on August 11th to, uh, to talk about that. Um, and then we did the town lobby renovations. So when we do open back up the lobby, um, we've got the, a broader desk there. And we'll be able to have two people in there helping customers. Because we're, we're opening up like four or five accounts uh, every week. And you know, things have been pretty busy even doing it the way that we're doing right now. And it looks beautiful. It does. It, look, it looks great. Uh, how, do they, how do they like working there, the, the girls there? Hmm? How do they like working there? Love it. Said it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we've got them spaced out. Right now we've got a partition that we built to put in between them yeah. um, during the COVID thing. But, but yeah, it seems to be working out well as far as space. and. <laughs> Uh, human resources. Um, so, the accomplishments in the last year, and I will, I've got two different things going on here. So, I don't know. And human resources. So, uh, uh, Nancy worked with, with Admin Services to create a volunteer onboarding process so that when we do start to implement and, and use volunteers with the New Arts and Heritage Center and with our um, events, We've got a process now for that. Um, we've instituted remote interviews. Uh, we've had to do a lot of interviews for teachers and, and other uh, things going on. So um, we've been doing those online. It seems to be working pretty well. Um, we've got an online orientation process for new hires. Uh, in fact, I think Nancy's got quite a few that she's doing next week with the school and, and teachers. Um, over the last year, we've hired 18 new employees. And I believe that doesn't count the ones that we're, we're in the process of hiring for the school right now with the VPK and the new teachers. Um, we've worked with staff to create safety policies and procedures for uh, COVID. That's actually taken a lot of work over the last three or four months. And um, created a system to document and track uh, COVID exposures and illness uh, in the workplace. And luckily, we been very minimal on that, but we do have things in place so that we can re react accordingly. She's also working on some policies that will be coming next month to update the employee manual. Are we also, work, aren't you working on retirement and things like that? Yeah, that's a, that's a joint effort between Renee and Nancy. We're working on the uh, switching over the retirement and that's going to come uh, towards the end of August. We're going to, I think the August 25th meeting. We're going to discuss that. Cool. Uh, planning and zoning. Um, Jay's, Jay's also been, Jay and Jeff have been busy, and, and Val. Val's been a great addition over there. Uh, by the way, it's really worked out well with the, how we set things up, with the intakes, with um, uh, permits, and, and everything that's going on over there. So they uh, we went through and adopted the new zoning code and the development code. Uh, we've done some comprehensive plan amendments um, over the last year. Let me see. Including the water supply plan policies and the lower density of the mixed use activity center, or just a couple of them. Um, in conjunction with admin services, they applied for that, uh, for the historic African-American cemetery grant from the State Division of Historic Resources. Um, created a preliminary design review process. We found that with, when we implemented the new design districts, um, it, it's something new and it's something different that a lot of people haven't seen. So we put together a process both for residential and commercial so that we can get people set up early in the process to, to sit down and talk with Mike Morrissey and be able to go through that architecture. Um, and, and I think that that was a, a great move uh, on Jay's part to, to set that up. Um, they've managed the development process. There's 13 different projects that have been discussed or met or are moving through the process in some respect. And that includes things like tractor supply, racetrack, uh, the avenues on Oakland, the Oakland Park, which um, it seemed like they're going gangbusters on the Oakland side over there. If you haven't been over there, there's at least five houses under construction. Uh, two of them with trusses and roofs and all the other. On our side. On our side. Um, 
they've uh, managed the billing services process with PDCS. And this is where it kind of, kind of jumps out at you. We've had 124 single family resident permits pulled since October 1 of 2019. And, you know, depends on when those permits were pulled as to when the COs were given out, but we've, we've uh, issued 176 single family certificates of occupancy. So that's 176 people that have bought houses and are moving in. Since October 1st. Since October 1st. Besides the 124 permits. Yeah. Well, some of those permits probably are some of those COs. Okay. Some of those COs are probably from the previous year. So there's a little bit of overlap there. It's just, it's a timing thing, but, but those are the two of the, the main things that you can, can look at. And then uh, we've had the opportunity to work with Healthy West Orange on a trails master plan as they try to draw Windermere, Ocoee, Winter Garden, and Oakland into kind of a a shared resources as far as trails and then how we can look at the, the trail system, how we can market it, and how we can include not just the West Orange Trail, but some of the offshoot trails. Uh, they've got all the, the municipalities are, are part of this, as well as uh, county parks. And uh, Jay's uh, been doing a lot of work and, and getting information to them uh, for our project. Great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a neat project when it's done. Um, Oakland Police Department. Um, let me uh, advance. Can you see? Can I ask a yes. question? With the trail thing, uh, is there any design, any discussion with the state? Because I know the state's trying to do the coast to coast. Um, I don't know that they've gotten into that yet. Okay. They're looking at trying to get all the information and all of what's available within the cities. Mm -hmm. I, they didn't talk about the coast to coast at, at this point, but I know that it will be part of the discussion okay. at some point. But they're looking at branding opportunities and how they can really activate the trails and including things like the little spurs, like our little cemetery right. trail and stuff like that. They're trying to get it all into like a comprehensive uh, trails plan. So maybe some kind of collaboration because I know the, the state is trying to do that coast to coast piece. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. And we want to connect all of the yeah. interior trails already in place. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, Oakland Police Department. So they are in the process. They were starting pre-COVID. They had to kind of slow down, but they're, they're getting back into, uh, uh, they're looking at their policies and procedure general orders manual as a, as a project. They are updating and rewriting the uh, manual. Um, as part of that, they'll also be looking at the use of force policies um, as part of that update. And then once complete, the new policy manual but will be used uh, to apply for accreditation. So Chief Peake, when he took over, that was one of the things that he wanted to do was to become accredited. And so that's part of the process. The first thing you got to do is go through your, your policy manual, and then you get into the next steps of, of applying for accreditation. Um, we are going to launch a, and I think it's already out there, an Oakland Police Department Facebook page. All right. Um, the new traffic trailer has been out and deployed and they've used it in a couple instances um, for, some, for some various things, but it's, it's, I think it's working well as far as keeping the traffic speed limit down. Um, they worked with the Orange County Emergency Operations Center, DOH, and the Medical Examiner's Office to secure the necessary PPE to ensure the safety of the officers and the staff. So that was something during March and April, and we were a little concerned about having enough PPE to make sure that they were safe. Um, but we, we've got some good partners with that. They've obtained a couple of grants over the last year, including the 2019 burn grant and the 17,000 from the committee of 100 um, of Orange County, and they've used that for equipment. Um, Oakland PD continues to do the community outreach with house checks, Oakland Partners programs, uh, thanks to the food drive and the Christmas toy drive. And I think that's just so important for community policing. Yes, absolutely. You're also getting body for everybody. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later. Question about that. Um, is the Pepsi truck, are we still using the Pepsi truck? Because I know some other communities around the country. We have it in a while. Yeah, using the police to just go out and do, you know, some community Give bonding, away. you know, like, you know, yeah. food or mm -hmm. just periodically. There was a point, I think, when we were going to refurbish it and do something yeah. with it, but it just we hadn't done anything with that yet. And, yeah. So. so I was thinking that's a good idea. I was reading another publication someplace else, 
in the police department, you know, just to get that good feel yeah. going back and forth, you know, doing, you know, some, um, mm -hmm. um, just food, not food giveaway, but you know, like a little picnic every once in a while. I know one time when we had the, little, the tall um, policemen here, they were going and doing some basketball playing yeah. around with the, the kids over there on the west side. So just trying to see what we can do. I know they, they, did some stuff. they did some stuff last year with Halloween and going yeah. out and going with the kids and doing stuff. But I'm thinking if we can do something that's not attached to a holiday, there's something that just... We just do. Yeah, just right. So right. it doesn't seem like it's, you know, one-offs. I mean, not one-off, but something that's attached to a theme because you know we're going to have our regular thing, but if we just can do something, just something special, just say, hey, let's do this once a quarter to a community body. And it could jump around to the parks. Yeah. That is something to think about. I, had th I, thought, I thought about it and I was going to bring it back to Chief. Got about it, but now he's just bringing us up. I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe we can. No, that's, no, that's, that's great. Yeah. And I know Chief. Bonding, you know. Yeah, I believe Chief's on the, on the call, so. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Yeah. He wasn't feeling well. He called me this morning, but so he's, but he's on the call. But I really think that Pepsi truck can be a, a, a big, something good for us, especially when we do the, um, the, the heritage center, you know, yeah. the center when we open that up and have somebody just move Well, you know, originally, remember that's what we did it with was that the, um, um, heritage day. the heritage day, the right. Pepsi trailer was always there. And it wasn't just, you know, it was almost a kid activity as well as for stuff because. Yeah, you take it to the heritage center as long as you get, keep the skateboarders off, some kind of public. <laughs> Yeah, but it's thinking of something outside of the box. Nice. You got to come like that bonding on a regular basis. You know. No, that's great. I, we, we definitely need to be looking at doing stuff like that. You know, we need to keep up the, the community, you know, input and uh, interactions. It is because we'll as I, I update my house so well on my refrigerator, I still got a picture of, of our kids in the Pepsi trailer. They're wow. about this big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the last thing was Corporal Lima was officer of the year uh, by Aspire Mental Health for his work with at risk and suicidal person. Awesome. Get into public works. Mike, I have to say, Mike keeps his guys busy. <laughs> Um, and like I said, everybody, even even through the COVID crisis, everybody's been busy and. Um, you know, making contributions and keeping keeping the, the different things moving because uh, we do have a lot of balls in there. So, all right, Mike, I have to give it to the staff, I mean, Public Works, and, and all the staff really. Uh, but Public Works accomplishments and updates: they uh, planted 33 trees in various areas around town, uh, with several hundred developers driven. Uh, they've replaced pavement pavement markings in Remington Road and Tuff Street. Uh, replace hazardous sidewalks and trail side and winter's landing. Uh, installed approximately 200 new water meters in various areas. Those water guys are the bomb. They are. They're great. They've secured, uh, Mike, I have to say, working with Kimley Horn, secured a water management district grant of 429000 to assist with the CDPG money that we have. And that project's moving along. We're at 60%. Uh, on the design right now. Mike's working through the comments and stuff on the 60% design. Um, the water impact fee uh, was uh, updated. Uh, affected town code changes to include the NPDES revisions and fertilizer use. Maintain more than 20 acres of town owned parcels, parks, utility sites, and right of ways. Um, and they do that at least every two weeks. They, they keep that stuff mowed. Um, completed the state audit on NPDES permit programs and worked successful in negotiating the five-year permit. And that was a pretty intensive audit that Mike went through. And, uh, initiated the first phase of inspection and testing of water system backflow devices and pumped approximately 15 million gallons of sewage to Clumont through our station. So our wastewater system is, is Definitely up and running. And I'm happy to give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> and um, is this the appropriate timing to talk about the money from Florida? Which so we talked about that. Oh, from the state? From the state. They gave us name. Oh, the $250,000? Yeah. Um, actually, I think I have that as part of the budget. Okay. So I'll, I'll bring that up. All right. That's one of the projects in next year's budget. 
Um, I've got a, a question for Mike before we go on. I know, Mike, we haven't had to deal with it because of the COVID and all the parks and stuff closed, but you know, I know you guys are working like 20 out of 24 hours a day right now, but is, have we put a plan in place? We talked about maintenance at the parks and keeping them up and clean and everything. Has that been kind of talked about at all? Uh, well, yeah, we've got a we've got a plan for opening the playgrounds and the parks are open, but the playgrounds are not. Oh, that's yeah, we've got a quote COVID plan, but we're still maintaining the parks yeah. as, as needed. Okay, they've got a, a blower now, and they they're getting out more often and blowing off the trail, the new trail, and over the sidewalks and then the different parks. They are getting out more often and, and taking care of things. I haven't heard anybody, but then again. People haven't really been out, you know, because of all this. So just making sure. And, and one thing that we just got completed that I didn't put on here was the fountain in the town center. Mm -hmm. uh, we've it's been cleaned up, painted, and yeah, refurbished. Refurbished and new lights put into it because there was one light that was working. And Mike managed that process with his crew and, and a consultant and a contractor. But I haven't got to see it tonight. I'm I'm kind of excited to see it tonight. Um, nice lit up. Um, the, the next part of it is projects. Um, so we've got a lot of projects that have been going on. So as you can see, the Arts and Heritage Center, uh, we're just about there as far as the contractor turning it over to us. Um, they, the rails are up and I believe they've got to do a little bit of finishing on that and then seal the concrete and then get the final inspections on it. And that's all we're going to do. That's working through the punch list. I have, I have to say those rails really made a big difference too. They, they really did. So I was in the park thinking maybe leave it open so it'll stay like a big, you know, a, a bigger porch. But that's very nice. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. They even let us do that. That's a probably not for yeah for fall. Rails and brick make it look really nice. Brick is a nice add. Good thing I thought about that, so Yeah, no, I backed you up. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good idea, man, you had. So um, the next thing on the, on the list is uh, phase one of the Spear Park improvements. So we've added the, the additional sidewalk over there. Um, we'll talk about what phase two could look like for next year um, when, I, when we get into the, the budget. Um, a, Refurbished and brought the ABC booster station back online to support water demands. A lot of that due to the development over on the, on the west side there. Uh, constructed new sewer infrastructure stretching from Tub Street to the Long Lake neighborhood. So we're getting ready to, to close that out. That's where it gets right over to Tub, just under Tub Street behind the um, uh, Baptist Church, well, between the Baptist Church and the um, uh, office building. So. The next phase of that project will be the list station, which is part of the, in the budget. And, um, and then we'll talk about the 250 that will be the next phase. Um, chose Kimley Horn Engineering to design the CDBG sewer improvements. And again, we're at 60% design on that. Uh, completed design, bidding, and commence construction of list station five. So that's coming. Um, we're hoping to have that done before the end of the year. Where is that going to be located at? Lift station number five? It's going to be in the right of way next to where that ball field is over there. Mm. And that big open space between uh, the Baptist Church and Presbyterian Church. Okay. So there's uh, some right of way. And I can show you exactly where if you, if you need to. Um, did some intersection improvements at Brock Street and Oakland Avenue, uh, those turnouts. Install three additional decorative street lights on the west side of town center. And then um, we also, as part of that project, um, with the, the main that went from Long Lake to Tub, there was a, another little piece that happened over by the industrial area uh, along Oakland Avenue. So that's been completed. So we're getting ready to close out that contract and, and go and do the next part of that contract, which is the lift station. So that pretty much covers the accomplishments and updates, you know, things that have been going on for the last nine to 12 months. And I'm sure I'm missing things, but 
I, I think you got enough. <laughs> but, you said you were going to talk about body cams in the budget. Yeah, so. I'm going to get to that. And when we get to the uh, impact yeah. fees part of that. And the money from the state. So um, the next thing is to, to get into the actual budget and, and, and go through a summary of, of the budget um, for next year. And this is still kind of a work in process, work in progress. I'll talk a little bit about that as we get into it. So the um, things we looked at, we're always looking at the millage rate. If there's opportunities to reduce the millage rate, you, you know that's one of the things that the commission's been looking for. So we always take that into consideration. This is kind of a, a unique year and um, to get to it, I'm, I'm not going to recommend reducing the millage rate for the stand where we're at. Um, at this time, trying to keep the, because of the, the current economic situation, uh, one of the goals was to keep this general fund as status quo as possible, um, making sure we have adequate reserves and then planning for infrastructure projects. So the first thing is the general fund, the total general fund budget is uh, six point, just under $6.3 million. Uh, we did have an increase in property values of about 17 percent uh, which is a, which is a significant increase it's a good solid increase for, for the town uh, but we did base the budget on for next year at keeping it at the same 6.5 mils and the reason for that is the uncertainty of sales tax revenues um, we uh, a, a, a good portion of our general fund budget is revenue sharing and sales tax that we get from the state. It's doled out based off of population. It is, like I said, a fairly significant part of our budget. And they will be doing some estimates through the state that we can kind of tap into, but they're not gonna be done until August. So that may temper a little bit what the budget looks like when it comes back for the public hearings in September. So, but at this point, with the increases that we've had on the property tax side, We've had um, you know, losses on the sales tax side. So I don't want to put us into any kind of a bind by trying to reduce the property tax at this point. There will be opportunities in the future. Uh, we've done two years in a row of reducing it. We went from 6.75 to 6.65 to 6.5. And I do, like I said, I, do, I, I know there will be opportunities um, in the future. I just think with the uncertainty that we've got right now, it's not a good time to try to reduce it at, at this time. I saw on TV the other day that Oviedo is looking at significantly increasing their mm. property taxes. They can't even cover their police and fire. Wow. Um, yeah. So I was going to ask where the other municipalities did. <laughs> well, Winter Garden, there was an article. They must have had their meeting last night. Um, there was an article online in the Observer, or maybe they had theirs last week. I'm not sure. Uh, but they're keeping their millage the same. They're taking a, a pretty significant hit in sales tax but they feel like with their reserves and, um, and everything, they're just gonna stay at the 4.5 mils that they're at right now. Yeah, and they're, I mean, they're at 4.5 mils. Yeah. So they have wiggle room. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, they never talk numbers on this TV soundbite, but when you get into the six point, you know, six mil range, you wanna definitely hold line as much as you can. Yeah. Um, one of the, the bright spots that you'll see with the auto presentation is where we were, our reserves were like negative 22,000 on, on the audit last year for 2018. When you look at the 2019 audit, um, and you'll be getting those fairly soon, um, our reserves in the general fund have increased to about $650,000. So we are on the, the right side of where we need to be. Um, as far as that goes. I'm happy about that. Yeah, so, um, and that's essentially, you know, revenues coming in higher than what the expenses were for 2019. So, and, you know, audits, budget you're working forward, audits you're working behind. So that's last year's audit that you'll see on August 11th. But I think when we do the books for the current year for 2020, I think it'll be a little more of the same and you'll see another increase in those reserves uh, this time next year for them. That's great news. So I, I think we're on pretty solid ground. Mike might not give us a lecture this year. Yeah. 
or less of a lecture. I, I was going to say, no, wait a minute. <laughs> I think we'll be happy. Yeah. We, should, yeah. we should look good. Yeah. Good improvements. Cool. A, a couple of things that did change with the general fund. Um, things that were either out of our control or just things that we needed to deal with. Um, Orange County Fire Rescue funding is based off, it's a formula based and it's based off of property values. So when property values go up, the cost of fire services also goes up. And so that went up about $120,000. But did it go up as much as last year? Because didn't we have a 24% increase last year? It was about the, the dollar wise, it's about the same as last year. Okay. Percentage wise, it's less, but dollar wise, it's about the same. Um, we also, uh, working through the budget uh, included the included the funding for salary increases, uh, the three percent for town staff, and a five percent for the Oakland Police Department. And again, those are always based off performance appraisals. Um, the five percent for the Oakland Police Department just is trying just to keep us in line with what's going on uh, in the market as far as hiring police officers. Um, it's uh, it's you know never seems to go down. It's always going up uh, as far as, you know, the cost of you know, being ready. You know, that cost of being ready is, is significant, but uh, I feel it's, it's a good place for us to be and we'll just need to continue to look at it from year to year to make sure that we're competitive and we can get quality officers for the town. No one wants to be a police officer anymore. <laughs> yeah, and that, you know, that could play into it in the future too. So, mm -hmm. um, it includes an increase to health insurance rates, but I've got Nancy still getting all the information um, on that. So the increase may be minimal once it's all said and done, but we're, we're still working through that. So right now we've got a budgeted increase uh, on that. Um, and then the funding increase for the Oakland Nature Preserve uh, based off of the staffing support that um, I've proposed in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, I will be bringing a new agreement with the Na for the Nature Preserve in August for the, the commission to consider that will um, put that, you know, memorialize the, uh, the, the staffing. And that'll be the, the town essentially taking uh, the staffing um, so that we can provide benefits to uh, the Oakland Nature Preserve employees. That'd be wonderful. And then we've also included an operating budget for the new Arts and Heritage Center. So the increases to the budget, those are the main drivers right there. Um, like I said, we did have some increase in property values and we did have a net increase in revenue, but it's not as much as you would think with, with the increase in values. And once we look at some, some better projections on sales tax, uh, I'll see if I need to adjust anything, come back to the terms. See if we thought when we talked about the uh the staffing for the preserve have we talked any more about um wrapping the teachers in a school around the same plans for their insurances um we've had that discussion and i'm gonna when, when i sit down with nancy and look at the plans uh, see how much closer we can get them we did make some inroads last year where they're closer than they have been and i'll see what what the offerings are for for next year and see if we can't get those a little closer just if you're a town employee, you're a town employee, you're a town employee, I think they should all be the same. And that's one of the things I've got to work through as far as the retirement. It may be a transition over a couple of years, but I want to get the retirement and the health insurance to be the same between the two. But I also have to be you know, clear and make sure I don't um, bust the, the school's budget either. So. As long as we're working towards it. That's all. And, yeah, we're working towards that because I, I agree with you. Any questions on the general fund? Utility fund, the utility fund's strong. Uh, we are, we, you know, we've, the, the town has put an, an enormous amount of investment into the utilities, including the wastewater. And now we're adding customers um, quickly and, and using some of that capacity that, that the system was built for. And so the, the revenues, um, on the water fund versus the expenses, the revenues are, are increasing quicker. So the, the, the utility fund's in a very strong place. Um, we've got you know wastewater revenue that has increased. And again, we, we have to pay on the other side, the city of Claremont to take that wastewater, but um, there's still a little bit of a net 
positive there. Um, it includes funding for three grant projects, and this is where we can talk about. So we got the CDBG and the FDEP uh, septic sewer conversion. That's a, that's a million dollars in grants right now. So that's where the, it's budgeted within the utility fund. We've got the 2017, 2018 appropriation, which is the force main that we're just about completed on. And then the list station, which is the second phase of that. Um, so that's budgeted because it won't be done until, you know, November, December timeframe. So it's actually part of it's budgeted in that uh, 2020 or 2021. And then the last piece is we went ahead and budgeted the 250,000 appropriation that we were just awarded. Um, we've got the paperwork that we have to complete to get that into the state. And that will be an extension of that force main um, as far as we can take it for the 250,000. And then at this point, um, the strategy for uh, next year's legislative session is to uh, go after money for what would be list station number six which would be back behind the school near Catherine Ross Road, somewhere in that area, and would allow the school and police department to um, get off of their septic system as well as open up those last uh, parcels on Highway 50 and uh, some of the, uh, the, the last couple parcels between there and Winter Garden that are for sale right now. So it, it allows for, you know, a lot of opportunity for things to get hooked up to the, the wastewater system. So yeah. that, that would be the plan. I'm going to um, would be to, uh, that would be our next ask for a legislative. If we had gotten the full million we were asking for, that's where we were headed with it. Well, I'm, you know, I, you know, I heard, you know, the day that it happened, record number of vetoes, line item vetoes by the governor. And I sent a note to Steve and said, we're out. And he's like, we're looking, we're still in. So I, I called everybody I could. Very and, grateful. And there was 18 pages of line item vetoes. Like little lines, you know, like 50, 50 lines to a page kind of thing. It was wow. a lot of vetoes that he went through. And um, we weren't on there. And then we officially got the paperwork, I guess, two weeks ago from the state. So we're. Wow, that's great. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. He was, I think he ran on water, you know, was one of his big platforms. So maybe yeah. that was part of his point of view when he was looking at what to cut and what to keep. I don't know. But we are grateful. Don't matter. <laughs> All right. Um, and then again, raises for the staff that are under the utilities, uh, increases to health insurance rates are budgeted in there. And then the reserves were estimated at about $841,000. And can we just, I just like to point this out every time I get a chance, um, that every employee in, um, every full-time employee in the town makes $15 or more an hour. Yes. Wow, that is also and that's, great news. I'm, I think we should be very proud of that. So, so like I said, the utility fund's very strong um, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good thing because there is, you know, you saw the water master plan. I'm going to talk about it a little bit in the impact fees, but there are some projects that need to be done. There are some future investments in the infrastructure that are going to need to be made. So having, building up the reserves there allows us to start planning for those future projects that need to happen. As well as um, the one other thing that's kind of been hanging out for the last two or three years is we had a revolving loan of $800,000 that we use to, to build wastewater infrastructure, but the loan is actually against the, the general fund mm -hmm. and it's sitting in a CD. So we are looking to actually, since we're in a solid place now with reserves, that by November, we're gonna take that CD and pay off that revolving loan. And then because that, that funding was spent for utility infrastructure, over time, the utility fund will pay back the general fund for that. How much do we own in the revolving loan? It's eight hundred thousand dollars. If you look in the last three or four audits, you'll see there's notes in there about this revolving loan. Um, it's sitting in a CD, so we get interest on the CD, but it's always um, less than what we. It's less than what we pay in interest. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it never really counted for our reserves. Like when we showed negative twenty-two thousand reserve, it's because that was obligated. That eight hundred thousand was obligated against this liability. So. 
we're going to be able to, to take that off the books and move forward past that because now we're in a, a positive place where we can start funding those, you know, future things. I'll take a few minutes to go through the, the projects. Um, this is kind of small. You probably you know, want to look at the, the paper. Um, so this is in working with, with Mike and uh, just kind of going through where we need to be based off of what we have uh, for impact. So what I've done is I've taken basically where we, where I started is where we end 2019 with, I add in what revenues and expenses we've had for this year so far, and then estimate how much revenue we'll bring in next year to get that revenue number that we're working off of. And so that's how, and then we'll take that, decide what projects are either mandated, have to be done, or are kind of in the plan to be done. So under the water system, you had the water master plan um, at the last meeting. It talked about the Northwest Loop and the fact that we need to find uh, an additional connection with the Northwest Loop. So we've got some money in there to look at that um, issue. And then uh, Scott talked uh, a lot about the additional water well and the um, uh, alternative water supply, which would be that Oakland Avenue and Hall Island. Um, so those two uh, at $100,000 is the seed money to start doing the design and start doing the work on both of those major projects. And then still leaves us some reserves to, to then put towards those projects as they come together. The um, alternative water supply is probably gonna be a two and a half to $3 million project. So that'll be funded from various different ways. But the $100,000 starts the process um, because we also wanna look at going after some DEP grants um, in the future for that. So we need to get that designed um, underway to start that process. Um, on the uh, wastewater side, we've got about 258,000 estimated uh, in funding. Um, we are putting forth some money towards that CDBG project. We've, um, we've got town share in that, and that may need to increase to $200,000 as we get through the design I'll know more about that and I'll come back if we need to increase that uh, funding for wastewater, but that's really going to get that CDBG project um, taken care of. Under parks and recreation, a um, couple of things here. And, and again, any of these look off or anything that you don't like or anything you want to change, we can, you know, prove this tonight. I can come back in September and we can oh, yeah. change this it up. Where, this is a beginning point. So we've got about $386,000, and this does not take into account the one other thing that's going on right now is the uh, apartments mm -hmm. and the permits and the, the fees from that mm -hmm. aren't reflected in here. So there will be some additional funding once all that gets taken care of. Um, so I'll probably be able to show that when we get to September. And for, yeah, for anyone in the audience, um, Impact fees are um, not taxes, they are what's paid when new residents move in based on um, their impact to the town. So these are not taxes. So what, what we've got on here for, for consideration is the Spear Park phase two, which would be the sport court. Uh, rehabbing the tennis court, putting in the pickleball court. That would be nice. Rehabbing the, the, the one basketball court and then adding another half basketball court that would be a junior court. What I expect to do is to start doing the planning for the playgrounds. That's gonna be a much bigger project and much more expensive. And we're gonna to need to kind of look at how we wanna procure that. So we would start the planning for the playground, but I don't know necessarily think that we'll, we'll get that, you know, installed next year, but we definitely can get these sports courts done mm -hmm. and start the planning for the playgrounds to be phase three. But again, taking that much time, I still want to stress, you know, living across the street from it, I see the kids in times that aren't like now, and it's old, you know, we need to pay some special, ugh, pay some special attention to these playgrounds yeah. um, because they are old to make sure that they're safe. There's two other things that are kind of driving that that I want to make sure kind of before we actually budget to, to do it would be a 
taking into account what we get for impact fees from now to the end of the year, and B, getting the Arts and Heritage Center closed out because we've pretty much said we're gonna use impact fees to pay the debt service on that. So we're paying debt service until we get this closed out and we can then pay off the debt, the, the grants that we've gotten. So I need those two things to happen. And then we may be able to come back and talk about the playground earlier than that, but I wanna make sure that we those two things happen and then we can talk about uh, how we want to move forward. To play well, if, if we want to move forward after those two things happen, can we change the Spirit Park schedule and do the playground first I, I before the right. pickleball and the sports court? I just, because that's going to be an eyesore for a long time. Nobody can use that. Right. That's even dangerous. Yeah. I, that's even dangerous. I think we need to think about that. Those playgrounds seem to be improved. Before oh, I, I, I do, it's gonna it's gonna take it's a lengthy process to go. Correct. For sure. sure. So I, I I get that, and we can we can start working on that, and then figure out how we're gonna fund it because it, it if if we want to do some, some really nice stuff, it's gonna it's gonna be expensive too. Okay. There's a sense of impatience there. Can you tell? I, I, I get it. Yeah. I feel it. I, I have to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to work with what I with what I know, and then plan on on the next step. So we're just giving you critical feedback. Absolutely. You asked for it. I was going to say you asked. <laughs> you asked for it. We can get some of those other moving parts nailed down and done, and I can come back with, with something yeah. concrete. Even if it's after after October one, I can come back and we can talk about it and take the money out of reserves and put it into the project. Yeah. Understood. Some more critical feedback. You got five minutes. Yep. Keep going. Um, last couple of things. So, uh, law enforcement. We have law enforcement impact fees that we collect. And the main project there is body camps. Since we're doing this as the initial um, start of the body camps and the initial purchase, and uh, we've worked through and, and looked at what some of the other cities have done. So the idea is to use impact fees to do everything after that. Future maintenance, future uh, would not be impact fee eligible. It would have to be out of the general fund. But the initial outlay can be out of the impact fees. And then I just have just a, a line item for general equipment um, uh, that, that's growth related. And then um, the last couple things, the, the last, so we've got transportation, admin, and fire protection are the last impact fees. Transportation is one where we've got the, the largest um, balance. And what we've got going on there is the, the roundabout project. So there's an interlocal agreement that'll be coming to the commission that calls for us to put up a million dollars for that project. Um, this, the county will be putting up 700,000 for the project. They are working very hard to get the project fully funded through NPM. Um, I have, they have some confidence that the county is gonna be able to accomplish that. If that happens, then a lot of this money will come back to, to go forward to other projects. But we are looking at a year out before the construction starts on, on that roundabout. Um, so uh, this is really just a placeholder to fulfill our the obligations on the interlocal agreement. I know. <laughs> it's become an oval. <laughs> Um, and then I, I, there's $50,000 in there because there's always some post-design services. I want to make sure we've got funding for that. We want to be pretty. Um, we, I, I thought the, the, the turnout we did at Brock was pretty successful. It looks nice and it's easier to maintain. I like that. Um, so we're looking to do a two or three more of those turnouts next year. Uh, Michael will come up with the best ones on that. And then just some general transportation study uh, and design funding, $75,000. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna recommend is that we look at how to take the little piece of star that's gonna be missing and how to make that connection on Star Street to have a fully functional road there um, after the tractor supply comes in. So we need to do the design and work with the community on that. Um, that'll be an important, important part of that project. So, um, Community meetings and design services will probably be something we'll come back and talk about early in the budget year. And that's where that will be funded out of. Uh, last thing is admin facilities. Right now we're building that back up because we purchased that piece of property for future development. And then fire protection. Um, 
the idea is maybe some opportunity to put some new hydrants in or put some hydrants in where there's some gaps is actually what I think we're looking to do. So we've got some funding in there for that. And so the total at this point, the total impact fee budget is about $3.6 million. And that's pretty much how it's laid out. Um, and then essentially what I'm going to be asking for at the regular meeting is um, approving the millage rate at 6.5. And again, you can reduce that at the public hearings if the commission so desired. And so I can't, can't increase it. Go down. Go down. Uh, public hearing dates can't conflict with Orange County or public schools or the Board of County Commissioners. So, and Labor Day is on the 7th. So, the recommendation is Wednesday, September 9th at 6 30, and Tuesday, September 22nd at 6 30. Anybody have any conflicts that they know? That's what it is. Those meet the trim guidelines that we have to meet to the state, the trim requirements. We're not going to have a commission meeting on the 8th. At eight, so to my eighth, we're not gonna have a commission meeting. Well, we'll just move our commission meeting to Wednesday. Yeah, we'll just move it to. That's the, what I was making sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll just move the, the meeting to the ninth. Okay. Yep. I got to hear that in my head. Wednesday night. Right. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. So those those recommendations. The last slide I'll bring back up during the regular meeting for approval of those three items. Very nice job. Do you have any questions? Quick no. questions. I mean, we can talk. If you think of something, we can talk more at the regular meeting. Okay. I'm going to close the uh, work session. Yep, I'll make sure we play around on priorities. Thanks. Um, so, does anybody need a, a minute or two? I would like to go out to the truck and get some water. Sure. Good. In a minute or two, we will start the regular meeting. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, all you guys. You've all done a great job. You really have. Yeah. I'm going to probably, I'm going up the lake. That's your mix. I'm doing about 30 miles an hour. Whether they can do 30 miles an hour, they can do it, I don't know. You say, it was, what is uh, 40 knots? Um, yeah. I'm not sure how to put it on. As my brother in law says, well, I'm going 40 knots. I'm not sure what you meant by that. Yeah. I worked at that store four or five years. Hey, theory. Yeah, yeah. It's my comics. I mean, it is. That's just 40 knots. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to get started. And um, there are a couple of you who were here in the last meeting. And I, I'm i going to, I think I can make a commitment that you won't be here as long as you were at the last meeting. <laughs> So we're an efficient meeting, so. I'd be putting money on that. That was, that was awful. <laughs> In a good way, we got a lot of it done. But anyway, um, I'm gonna start the town regular commission meeting and call it to order for July 28th. Please stand for the pledge and the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. My nation, my God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Kathy, please pray with me. Richard Scott, thank you that you call us into life not in isolation but in community. We're grateful for this community of Oakland, Florida, and for the leaders who guide and shepherd it. We pray your blessing on this meeting tonight that all that is done may further your purposes. Amen. Amen. And Paige is the interim pastor at the Oakland Presbyterian Church. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, roll call. Commissioner McMullen. Present. Commissioner Cullen. Here. Commissioner Ramos. Present. Vice Mayor Satterfield. Present. Mayor Stark. Here. We have a quorum. All right. Has there been any ex parte communication? No, ma'am. All right. Um, we do have an opportunity for public forum for anyone who is here that wants to speak about something not already on the agenda. We ask that you keep your comments brief. And um, I'm wondering if I have any takers. And it's, I am very happy to see some um, new faces here. I mean, you might be new faces, it's hard to say. <laughs> but happy to see you here.
All right, consent agenda. Do we have anything that we have questions about? No, ma'am. All right, I need a motion, please. I'll make the motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Do we have any questions or comments from the audience? All in favor? Aye. 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 Other policy matters. Oakland Avenue Charter School update. Is Pam on the line? She is. Can you all hear me? Hey, Pam. Everyone, good evening. Um, so I have a presentation uh, that I would like to share with you to uh, review uh, what sort of what's the, been the background to the most current information in regards to uh, the reopening of schools uh, since the closure um, due to COVID concerns. So, um, Elise, do you want me to uh, share, or are you going to project it and whatever works for you best, Pam? Okay, post disabled it. If you, yeah, it's fine. Either way, I can work it. It's it's not a it's not a super intense power presentation, so I can follow along either way. Okay, hold on just a second. Okay. I, or I can control it if you give it to me. Yeah, hold on just a second. I'll give it to you in just a second. There. Okay, you should now have control. All right. Well, everyone, um, as you probably know that uh, the situation that has been happening has uh, be began in uh, probably the concerns for uh, COVID, I believe, started sometime in January, February. We started hearing concerns in regards to um, minor concerns from family families started to begin a um, sort of a public relations uh, addressing hand washing and health issues. And during our spring break time, uh, middle of March, uh, there was a determination that schools would be closed. Schools were initially closed from March 23rd through March 27th uh, due to these growing concerns without um, really any further updates. Uh, so the, the closure was intended to be short term. Uh, pretty quickly after that, uh, they, the state <laughs> determined that all school would go to uh, online learning uh, and that started on March 30th. It gave uh, schools approximately one week uh, to launch an entirely new process, uh, distribute uh, media uh, devices to students and uh, get up and running and try to continue uh, school in a situation that nobody really understood. And I'm not sure I can really uh, say with certainty that we understand now. Um, at this, okay, is it, is it happening or did I not share it? You didn't share it, I just- I'm Oh, sure. sorry, okay, I was, all right. <laughs> okay, there I am, sorry, sorry. We're still, sorry. We're still on a learning curve. All right, great, okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we, back one, I'm back. Okay, sorry. Yeah, back one, there we are. Uh, so we uh, got to work uh, fast and furious, and I, I feel that I can say, um, without any uncertainty that we offered a great program. Uh, the biggest challenge in the program that we offered, which we did not title at the time, it was just distance learning. That was the catchphrase at the time. Uh, there's been a few catchphrases since then, which is the, um, the pulse of education, it seems like. Uh, the biggest challenge was addressing the various um, skill sets of our parents. Um, that was probably, uh, and just in generally, the technology, the organization, and keeping up with information. Uh, parents were thrust upon um, educating their children um, and gaining all this knowledge themselves. So um, while we had, uh, um, you know, did everything we can, the added challenge during this process was uh, definitely from uncertainty. Okay, can we go forward? So... Um, at this point, from in the spring 2020, we uh, the online or distance learning, uh, we decided at that moment that we would use a program that we um, have been familiar with. We used Microsoft Teams as the web conferencing platform for our students. Uh, we knew it had limitations uh, compared to other uh, platforms such as Google Classroom, uh, Zoom, um, which uh, you probably have experienced the Zoom um, concerns at the beginning before they issued passwords and so forth, and that was. That, that information was running rapid um, through the school systems and of course through social media. And so we, we actually um, were lucky that we've had a great deal of experience with uh, Microsoft Teams um, at the school. So it was a familiar platform and it offered the best option for the limited time to launch and implement uh, such a, a learning program. So 
the the foundation of our program was uh, that we wanted to make sure that we had it and we continue to sense a community that our children, uh, the, our little eagles were able to interact uh, with a teacher live as well as offer some ongoing assignments to try to fill the gap. The schedule was not did not match um, our typical school day. So that added to some of the limitations. We really thought long and hard in relationship to how we would create a schedule. And so we had um, what we called um, instructional release times um, that varied for, each, for different grade level. And the purpose of that is because we felt that families may um, have, that you know, many have devices, many have um, their own devices, but their phones. It's not um, typical that a family has multiple laptops and or multiple iPads to be using. And if all the children had the exact same schedule, it, we, we, we uh, assessed that it would be quite difficult. Uh, there was pluses and minus those pluses and minuses to that. Those families with multiple children, uh, we're definitely feeling um, the pain, I would say, in regards to uh, just trying to uh, maneuver a schedule for their families. But that being said, uh, we continued to offer uh, live sessions, which everything was recorded for our students. So if the child, um, if parents were still at work, they could access this information later uh, for later viewing. And so the state did uh, mandate attendance tracking, but it was reduced. And so any and all contact met, met the stand, uh, attendance requirements. So we were very fortunate to have about 98% attendance um, and, and that wasn't even just at the bare minimums. We had 98% of our students participating and those um, that were not participating, we were reaching out to them on a regular basis. So we, we um, really actually feel that we reached our students uh, to, the, to the maximum amount possible in this process. Okay, we'll go forward. So that brings us to summer of 2020. Uh, this, I, 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 this, uh, we can, we can, uh, Nancy jokes that this is Pam's perfect pandemic. Um, this is not Pam's perfect pandemic, I can tell you that. Uh, it has been a tough summer uh, to try to maneuver uh, the information or the lack thereof. So uh, I just wanted to give you a brief rundown of the things that have happened uh, during the summer that have led us up to uh, what, what is today. So the entire month of June, there was no word um, and there were so many uncertainties. If you were on social media, uh, you could uh, witness a varying school reopening plan options that were out there. There were schools that were talking about a Monday, uh, Wednesday and a Thursday, Friday hybrid model where half the school came on those two days, half the school came on the other days and Wednesday was online learning for everyone. Um, some were discussed, some um, places across the state are talking about all online. Um, there was conversations in regards to half days uh, because there were conversations that were in relationship to transportation. Now we do not provide transportation to our students. Uh, so uh, that wasn't a primary um, thing, the primary concern in regards to the, the half day consideration, but we were spending time evaluating what are some, all these options through June. Uh, and in late June, the surrounding school districts, not Orange County, um, started to release their plans on their website. Those plans initially offered three different options. One was half days of school, um, half the students coming, the other one was online learning, and then of course all um, district schools have the um, have the allow are allowed to offer virtual school to their students and I believe that the majority of districts do have a virtual school option. Uh, it's important to note um, or at least um, a valuable to note that Florida virtual school is run by the state where Orange County virtual is a um, virtual school that is run by Orange County or Lake County virtual or so forth. So um, at that time in June, charter schools were not allowed to uh, legally permit to offer an online learning option. So that particular time, I was spending time making contact um, with uh, charter school attorneys, uh, the charter school consortium to determine what, if any, options were available to us. At one point before um, the next bullet point, there had, pretty, there had been a, um, a, a kind of a consensus that, you know, we're going to continue to do a, a consensus in my mind, I say, not a consensus with others. I'm just saying like a, a, um, a singular train of thought that we provide school in the building 
Uh, we are gonna offer that if a family wants to, um, to choose another option, uh, we will encourage them to do so for, that's the best for their family, uh, but they can access that through the virtual school options. That, so we were, we were steadfast in that regards, my staff and I, and I had some conversations with uh, Vice Mayor Satterfield in regards to that idea, as well as uh, Mr. Kuntz. So on July 6th, um, what would have seemed like the answer to that uh, thought process was the DOE executive order that was signed. And this particular order limited the options for flexibility. Um, it said that brick and mortar is a must. Uh, that, is, uh, that is the term as well as face-to-face um, -face is the other term that is being used um, interchangeably. In that um, executive order, uh, there was a statement that said schools must start in August and you must order five days a week. At that time, in that, uh, that uh, executive order, there was verbiage in there that said that innovative learning environments to include charter schools um, would be allowed with a reopening plan. Around that time, we launched a parent survey to decide if our um, thinking process in relationship to just offering brick and mortar or face-to-face -face was in line with what our parents um, needed or wanted. Um, we certainly want to support um, a parent's right to choose. Uh, we are a choice school, but there was at that moment more uh, the, the case uh, were being reported were growing and we were starting to become concerned um, in regards to a mass exodus um, for withdrawals. And so we did a um, two surveys. We conducted mm -hmm. a parent survey and the question that was asked as of today, which was July 10th, which option would you choose for your child or your children? Uh, there were 430 uh, respondents. Keep in mind, there um, are, including VPK now, that we will start this year, almost 600 students that um, attend the school. However, with families only answering once, uh, we felt like this was a pretty good catch of our entire school population. So 275 uh, respondents said they wanted traditional brick and mortar and 123 uh, would like what at that moment we, uh, by that time, had decided to name a possible option as OACS at home, which was the distance learning. And then um, also you indica indicated, there's an indication that about seven uh, families had expressed on July 10th that they would be withdrawing from OACS. So at the same time, we did um, a survey to our staff to get a sense of where our staff was feeling uh, in regards to returning to the building. And obviously we need our teachers to do our job well. Uh, so we said based on the executive order, uh, school is set to resume on August 11th. That was what was happening at the time. And the simple question is, are you question mark prepared to return on August 3rd or not prepared to return on August 3rd? And so um, out of that, only five, we did not get a full catch of all of our staff. Not all staff stays um, engaged uh, in the summer in regards to communications, um, but we had only five. I reached out to those five individually to get a sense of how they're feeling. Um, four of them um, basically indicated they're just not ready for what's ahead. Um, really just not that they're not going to be there and not that they're not going to do it. They just couldn't visualize what was ahead and they were just sharing their feelings. Another one um, does express uh, significant trepidations in regards to returning uh, with the cases, um, case low, the, the case numbers um, on the rise for Florida. So we decided to uh, put, go back to the drawing board in regards to looking at what our plan would offer for this reopening plan in this reopening plan uh, they required, um, as I made the statement, that you had to open brick and mortar five days a week based on the executive order. So here are the plan considerations. Um, so I told you we considered offering brick and mortar only. Um, we were concerned with withdrawals. We wanted to respond to our family's needs. Um, and we wanted to be able to address, can we put the he public health issues into place in a full classrooms? Um, with ease, not necessarily with ease, with efficiency, um, with, with dedication, with care and concern. 
And so the other thing uh, that we were obviously concerned about is the increasing cases being reported in Florida. So we, we looked, uh, the plan considerations included an adjusted calendar to allow for more teacher development to improve upon what we learned from online learning in the spring. Um, this, in addition to all uh, the plan uh, was I spent many hours on the Orange County Public Schools uh, board <laughs> meetings, uh, listening to what um, was a, a great debate in regards to opening schools at all. Uh, we wanted to align our schools the best that we can. And so at that particular time, the stance was that they were going to push back schools as well. It would allow for some time for possibly the cases to start reducing. Um, and the curve to flatten, as uh, the statement has been, has been hopeful. Um, and then uh, we decided to uh, create a calendar with a student start date of August 21st and a teacher start date of August 3rd. So we have submitted a plan to the district and uh, each one of you should have uh, received a, a summary a flyer at some point in the last week from Steve in regards to um, the, what the plan uh, details, but there are basically two parts of this reopening plan. There's traditional school, which is face to face and brick and mortar. It is five days a week and we have public health considerations happening. Um, in that flyer, you can find the specific public health um, considerations or actions that we plan to take. And I'm happy to address those um, in a few moments if you'd like me to. The other is an innovative model, which is our online, which we've entitled OACS at Home. And uh, this particular innovative model must meet six seat time of traditional school. So those that opt for this will have their children engaging in online learning of some fashion from 8.30 till three o'clock, Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and until two o'clock on Wednesdays. And at this time, our plan has assigned a coordinator to manage the deliver of these lessons uh, through online means because it is essentially running a separate school within a school. I'll go one, see if I have one more. Did I stop there? I'm trying to remember if I had more. Okay. All right. So that is a very concise and quick overview of the events that have happening since last March. Uh, we have presented our plan to, uh, it had to go through the district. We received word yesterday morning uh, that it was approved, uh, was approved. Uh, so we are good to take, uh, move forward. Our next steps going forward would be to, um, we have moved to an online platform for our back to school forms. And in that back to, this is called School Docs. And in that back to school form, there will be a choice that the families will make for their students. They will be committing to a semester of OACS at home or brick and mortar. Um, and at that point, they will not have ability to move from at home to traditional until this uh, close to the second quarter. They will, if they want to return, they can return for the second quarter. Or all students are to return to the building at this time uh, based on the authorization under the depart the executive order by January 4th, I think it is. Let me think what else I've left out. We adjusted our calendar and although just yesterday um, the Orange County Public Schools came out and decided that they are actually labeling August 10th as their first day of school for all students to be online with brick and mortar starting on August 21st. Uh, Teresa Jacobs came out and said that she doesn't want anyone to have any fear that they will not be taking attendance. So uh, we are staying steadfast in our August 21st uh, date to start school. We have taken some um, instructional minutes to keep our calendar consistent uh, elsewhere in the year and use the time to prepare our teacher for an unprecedented year. I think that's about it. <laughs> that's all, Pam. That's it. <laughs> That's it. The question would be, what did you do after lunch? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> did I have lunch? That's the question. <laughs> really big thank you to you and your staff. This has been thank quite you. the challenge. And I think that an August 21st start date is, is prudent. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. No, very good, Pam, and you know our our kudos to your entire staff. And at, at one point, somewhere along the line, in all this mess, in in one of your staff meetings, you know we should probably address your staff with our congratulations and yep. thanks for it too. Thank you, thank you. That would be wonderful. So thank just you. let us know when that appropriate time would be, yes. and we'll put it on agenda here, or we'll do a meeting there. We'll do something like that, I think. Okay. All right. Thank you, you very much. Do you have any questions at the table? Sal? Yes. Pam, again, congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the at-home schooling that won't be able to become uh, eligible for traditional school till they get to the second semester. So they, if they start Second quarter. Home, they, can, they can come in on second quarter, but they have to come back at the second quarter if, if it's not continued. Mm -hmm. What about vice versa? If yes. you start brick and mortar, can they go back to so home? They cannot, we, the children cannot, um, they can leave. Um, well, one of the reasons that we wanted to have this plan available also is in case we need to do any self-isolation and or quarantine. So it is set up for that. So those can only move from traditional to OACS at home through medical necessary um, determination. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any questions from um, anybody in the audience? Okay. Um, and we need a vote on this, correct? Do we need a motion on this one? Motion. No, it was just this, this was informational. Uh, informational. informational. Well, Pam, thank you very much. Do you have any other questions? I believe you voted on the calendar as part of the. Um... Yeah, and in the consent agenda, the calendar was in the consent agenda yes, for plus. the approved calendar. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you, right. Pam. Thanks, Pam. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think Thanks can say it, can mm -hmm. cover it, but. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Approval of the town proposed millage and budget. Bring up the oh. last slide up. Yeah, okay. quick, you can do this. <laughs> I apologize. I wasn't forwarding the slides as I was talking because I was trying to talk to y'all and forgot about the screen. So, but um, so, I did, so anybody that was online might have missed a few of my slides. But anyway, so requested action. If you could do these in three uh, motions. First one to approve the tentative millage of six point five, and that is what will show up on the trim notices. The second one is the tentative budget, and that's these three budgets. It does not include the school, utility, general fund and impact these. And then the last uh, approval would be the, the dates and times of the public hearings. All right, we held a one hour um, workshop uh, prior to this meeting about the budget. Um, these are what we are approving tonight. There will be two meetings where we will talk about the budgets again. A um, few things could change, be tweaked, um, but uh, this, is where, this is our starting point. So um, for the first item, do I have a motion to approve the millage rate? I'll make a motion to approve the millage rate of 6.50. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. This millage rate is the same as it, were, as it is today. Um, we can go down if we see the opportunity, which is what we wanted to do, but given the current situation and the lack of sales tax, this is where we're sitting right now. So um, do we have any questions from the audience? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Second item. I'll make the motion to approve the 2021 tenant of budget at 13,906,827. I'll second it. Would it be fair to say that's flat? Uh, it has a little bit of an increase, but generally it's, it's flat. Okay. Other than those few items that I showed. So, do we have any questions from the audience? All in favor? Aye. Third item. I'll make a motion again to approve the dates and times for the budget public hearings for uh, Wednesday, September 9th at 6.30 and then Tuesday, September 22nd also at 6.30. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions from the audience? Back to the table. All in favor? Uh, the first public hearing will actually show up on the trim notice and be advertised that way, but we will also make sure we get it onto the website and Facebook. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. So, um, Steve, uh, you said that we are um, going to table resolution 2020-06? Yes, please. Okay. So We'll bring, bring that back at a later time. Need to move on that or we done? It's just a resolution, so we just need to, to pull it. All right, so I have a question that Jimmy Dunn might not like. <laughs> um, this presentation looks hefty. Can we do these second hearings first because they move along pretty quickly and move this to after the second hearings? You want to do the presentation as part of the second hearing? No, no, I just want to move the agenda. Oh, oh, I, I got you. Does that make sense? I don't think it's a problem. Okay. And is this, is this a, a two part public hearing because it just says public hearing on the agenda? No, this would, is a, uh, actually it's an action that was taken by the ARB and PNZ and this is your, your portion of the variance. Simple okay. motion, simple motion. Uh, okay, all right. So can we move this, just get the second ones out of the way and then do this? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'm going to log off then because I'm moving up towards my two hour limit on my Zoom um, and I will come back shortly. Okay. Bye -bye. Those are mine. So. Okay. <laughs> will we will we end up timing out? No. No, Our, okay. no just me because I'm on the free version. Yeah, we, we timed out last meeting. So but it shouldn't affect him, shit. G I don't think it's gonna affect you, Jeff. It doesn't affect him. Okay. You're on our point. It's a Join down meeting, so it shouldn't affect well, you. if I do happen to drop out, then that's why. <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's, it's not like it's, he's hosting. We're hosting. Yeah. But we did time out last time. No, it, it wasn't our time. It yeah. was because Jonathan had a cutoff on the uh, oh, okay. security reasons. That's why. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we, yeah, we uh, so it, it had nothing to do with Zoom when we talked okay. about it. All right, everybody else was still on. Okay, gotcha. All right. We'll bring Jonathan. <laughs> that, that's not saving time. Okay, um, so um, at my request, we're going to do the second public hearing for Ordinance 2020-07. Okay. Yes. Uh, usually it gets read, but they okay. weren't title. Oh, sorry. That's me. Elise. Ordinance. Elise. <laughs> ordinance 202007, an ordinance of the town of Oakland, Florida, amending the town of Oakland the comprehensive plan as previously amended, providing for amendment of the future land use map of the future land use settlement of the town of Oakland comprehensive plan relative to certain real property containing approximately 0 0.29 acres, parcel number 2022-27-61018-19-010, address 102 West Oakland Avenue, said property being more specifically described in this ordinance from low density residential to commercial, providing for legislative findings and intent, providing for assignment of the land use designation for the property, providing for the adoption of maps by reference, providing for severability, providing for ratification of prior acts of the town, providing for conflicts of severability, providing for codification and directions to the code codifier, and providing for an effective date. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll speak now, and we normally don't uh, uh, give a presentation on these second uh, readings, but uh, but I have a, a short presentation here. Just simply number one, right now you're you're looking at the comprehensive plan uh, change uh, just to uh, to commercial. So if you want to act on that, then we can go on to the zoning and look a little bit more in detail. So it's a, it's a two step process: comp plan, map change. To, uh, from residential to commercial. Well, we, we had lengthy conversations about this at the last meeting, I think yeah. we understand. Uh, and, and I'll just go ahead and explain then, Mayor, that, uh, and here's the first uh, iteration of a, of a concept plan. I assume you're seeing this, and, uh -huh. and, uh, and we did have a very uh, uh, good meeting with uh, Mr. Morrissey on, um, last week and uh, went over and I think we ironed out a lot of details on how this should work. It really wasn't, it wasn't bad, but 
this is a lot smoother uh, with a with a much better uh, circulation plan off of Oakland Avenue and uh, uh, and a, a nicely uh, articulated parking area in the back with uh, switching around the um, uh, handicapped access so from from the front to kind of the side entry there in the back so I think it'll look a little better uh, um, uh, Sherry uh, the applicant uh, uh, told us you know about how well the place is uh, has been redone it's uh, it's in pretty good condition inside and uh, I'll certainly entertain any uh, any questions you may have uh, in that regard this is on page 83 of your of your agenda package by the way okay any questions at the table? No, I was pretty yeah. specific with it last time. Yeah. <laughs> we spent some time on this. Well, I just wanted to make sure that, that you knew that the applicant had met with Mike and, and Jay and that they had worked through the site plan because I know there were some yeah, questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's, that's wonderful. I just want to make sure the applicant understood that there was a lot required. So, um, if I might have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve second reading of ordinance 2020-07. I'll second it. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Is there any questions or comments from the audience? Yes, ma'am. If this is being from this notice that we found to last week of the first meeting, is second meeting? Uh-huh. I'll be living right across the street from that. Mm -hmm. And I like my street because it is residential. I don't know how I feel about the commercial building going across Okay. Um, can we, I'm sorry, they're having a hard time hearing. Can we have people come yeah. to the podium? That's a good idea. And probably state their name and address for the record. Yep. Oh, thank you. Hey, hey, Tom, can I credit people? Um, okay. Do you see them at 113 West uh, Avenue? There's somebody that's not muted that's, um, Virtual. There's a lot of background noise. Sorry. We've got a lot of background noise. Okay, thank you. No, we don't. Can you repeat again? Yeah. Smith. 113 West Oakland Avenue. Or Oakland Avenue. Um, I wasn't here at the first meeting because this looks like I could only show up at the second meeting. Um, my whole reason for moving here is the small town feel of this place and I like my Oakland Avenue and I don't know how I feel about a commercial building going across the street from me. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, want, I, I feel like I want to give you an explanation that is not as technical as you will get from our, our planner or our town manager is there is a design district for Oakland Avenue specifically addressing commercial buildings, which Oakland Avenue is a mixture of commercial and residential. So think about like the real estate office that's on the corner of Tub and Oakland. Think about um, 55, is it 55? I can't remember the name of it, the brick building. The little one, yeah. Yeah, so think about it in that way. This is just gonna be a little tailoring shop with very little traffic, still is gonna keep that residential small town feel. That is um, in keeping with what we put in place on Oakland Avenue. So that's the point of view from which we are, are working. So I, okay. And it used to be a grocery store. Yeah, on the corner of Tub it's and Oakland. It's down, but just a block away. Yeah, that yeah. And that yeah. corner, the corner that's empty, used to be a little um, antique store. Mm -hmm. And um, it will most likely become commercial. And I would say that a lot of Tub Street on the um, south huh. end of Tub will become commercial. So it's kind of keeping within what we have been planning all along that um, the design districts and all the work that we have done. So um, I, I know I'm not giving you an answer you probably want to hear, but I'm just trying to explain the rationale. Very low density commercial, yeah. quaint. That's what we shop. Very quaint, very Mayberry. So you won't lose the feel of a home. 
It won't look. So the one on the corner that's now a real estate agent mm -hmm. was a, I believe a bed and breakfast. And then it was a hair salon with a massage up above. And then it was a little kitschy place with a trying to get an eatery outside. And then the real estate agency finally bought it out. What if their cutesy little Mayberry town thing suddenly decides to sell to a vape shop or something? A what? Vape? Like a uh, tackle and bait there, little organic shop or something? Yeah, yeah. anything no. bigger. Th those uses are not. So there's a restriction on what the commercial can be. So you're kind of moving forward with commercial regardless. But at least there's oh. a restriction on what kind of commercial it can be. It, this is the technical part. Yeah, <laughs> Jay, Jay can explain this better. It's, it's under C1 commercial, and there's only certain uses that, that can happen under that based off of our zoning code and the design districts. So generally, most of what's in there is, is low intensity commercial. You Nothing can't have a gas there. station there. You, you know, there's, there's 24 hour, no eight. Yeah. It, needs to, it, it needs to be kind of work within the community there. So yeah, yeah. you're not looking for something that's 24 hours uh, with a lot of traffic coming in and out. It'd be more like uh, offices like you have at the corner, right. um, low intensity kind of commercial. Okay. With the look that kind of matches. Okay. Well, if you ever decided to take the building down and put something else there, there's a lot of restrictions on what they could put and what it would look like and, and all that. We've got, we've, the, the commission's worked real hard to, to define what things look like on Touch Street and on Oakland Avenue um, to keep that character. All right. Well, thank you. But your comments are duly noted. All right. So, so did you I just want to add one thing. Um, the mayor and most everyone here really drilled down last meeting. So anytime you see a meeting notice, please come. There's no restriction. Because you had two dates, and then this one was just for today that we got. It just says July 28th. Yeah, we oh, you talking about yeah, we, we needed to, to, to let everybody know at least one of the two meetings we needed oh, okay. to do a mailer, and so it ended up being for the second meeting. Okay, yeah. But we don't have to send you mail, you're welcome anytime. Yes. Yeah. And I can an applicant if I don't you know, want to speak real quick at all. And just to reassure her, sure. Um, Would you state your name? And yeah, I'm Sherry Kent, I'm the owner, and um, my plan for it is I've been a tailor, I'm a master tailor, and I've been doing that for over 30 years. I've always um, wanted to have my own like little shop. I owned a shop before in Sarasota from um, uh, 1997 to 2003. So I have been in business before. I'm training my daughter to follow my footsteps with the tailoring. So it's just a little small um, tailoring place. And I'm also going to do a workshop for children to teach. Nothing big or anything, um, maybe one to three children per class. You know, um, especially with the pandemic and parents are looking for something for their children to do, I do want to pass it on and teach and my daughter will be doing some alterations, but it's very low-key. I, I usually will see people buy placements during the day for um, alterations. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I plan on keeping it healthy. It's not like I'm trying to get it for bit or sell or anything like that. I, wish to pass this out to my daughter. And the other, um, the, and the other point I, I would personally like to make, and Sal's in the same boat as, as, as I am, as you well know, I see you walk down my street all the time, is this is in our backyard too. So, um, and I'm planning to actually make the place look really good. I'm getting a new roof. Yes. It's not going to look any different. I'm not changing the look of it, the wraparound porch or anything. I'm just going to really make it look good and um, I understand the the look that Oakland wants. I've been I've met with Jay numerous of times um, with the landscape, planning it up, so it's going to look really nice. I really appreciate that you are going to be doing that yes. to beautify that corner, mm -hmm. to finally have someone to actually take care of it as their yeah. home, because it's been going through rental. Yes, sometimes it's been yes hit or miss, and sometimes you have people who rent who are not the ideal, you know, uh, Oakland people that like to. Right. Enjoy living here. They can just pass her by. She's gonna be home. So and I'm catty corner to you. To, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I want to like connect with the community and even possibly do little fashion shows and with the Heritage Festival, the children can get involved and things like that. I'm into art and fashion, 
and you know the cakes and stuff like well, that. I, I can tell you for the record, not on my watch will I ever see a gas station on that. Right. Oh. <laughs> with gas stations in Oakland. <laughs> here's, here's the important question. How good are you with Hawaiian shirts? Very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, any other comments from the audience? All right. I'm going to bring it back to the table. And we, I do have a motion, correct? We have a motion. All right. So all in favor? All right. Okay. But we'll make sure that, you know, we get you noticed when things happen. Okay, second public hearing ordinance 2020-08. We need to read. I, oh, oh, my God. I thought you gave it away last time, last meeting. <laughs> okay, ordinance 2020-08, an ordinance of the town of Oakland, Florida, amending the town of Oakland zoning map of the town of Oakland relative to certain real property containing approximately 0 0.29 acres, parcel numbers 22-22, sorry, parcel number 20-22-27-6108-19-010, address 102 West Oakland Avenue, said property being more specifically described in this residence from R1A, single family residential to C1 commercial, providing for legislative findings and intent, providing for assignment of the zoning district from the property, providing for the adoption of maps by reference, providing for severability, providing for ratification of prior acts of the town, providing for conflicts and severability, providing for codification and directions to the code codifier and providing for an effective date. All yours, Jay. <laughs> oh yeah, Jay. Um, oh, I think this is. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I think you wanted me to say something, and uh, <laughs> not much to say. Uh, really, it's, it's just consistent with your your plans uh, for that. Basically, that close area around Tub and and Oakland Avenue as a focal point for uh, you know, professional and personal service type offices, et cetera. So the, the C1 is, is reasonable and consistent, compatible with that uh, policy for that area. And that's it. All right, so questions? No. Oh, you wanna make a motion? Sure. Got your hand up. That was, wanna make a motion. Right. Make a motion uh, to approve second public hearing ordinance 2020-08. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments from the audience? Okay, bring it back to the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, second public hearing ordinance 2020-14. Got it. Got it. <laughs> ordinance 2020-14, an ordinance of the town of Oakland, Florida, vacating an existing utility easement between lots one and two of the plat of Oakland Park, unit 6A, plat book 101, pages 70 through 72 of the public records of Orange County, providing for severability, conflict, and an effective date. Okay. Um, this is another one that we had a conversation about. So, go ahead, Jay. Well, uh, I don't have a, a, uh, a presentation and Jeff is here. So if you want to hear from him and see a presentation again, we're certainly glad to, uh, he's glad to do that. He's here. So. Um, this is the Oakland Park, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got, we've got, so. That, that's the next one. Yep. He got excited. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for some reason, I'm used to working with multiple screens and I'm trying to do this on one laptop. It's driving me insane. <laughs> well, you're already there. Well, I, you know, we, we, all, had, we, all in some way. <laughs> we had plenty of conversation about this at the last meeting. I think we all understand that you're vacate, we're vacating an easement to make two lots on the lake in mm -hmm. Oakland Park, one lot for one right. rest. So, um, do we have any other questions? No, ma'am. All right, so I need a motion, please. I'll make the motion to uh, accept second public hearing of ordinance 2020-14. Okay, 
Second it. Okay, so we moved and seconded. Any questions, comments? I know the requesters in the audience. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. All right, well, we got a vote. You're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> so I will bring it back to the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. How you, can you can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we'll move back to the public here and like the pocket sounds those landing subdivision variants request. Yeah, there we go. Now I can bring this back. Is it sharing? Yeah, hey, good. Okay, good. Okay, this is a request by Lake Popka Sound, um, Eagles Landing for a variance request to exempt from the development design district regulations for residential buildings. Um, Planning and Zoning Commission and the ARB both uh, saw this request in June. Um, they both recommended uh, an approval of it. Um, just to kind of give you an overview. Um, it is Eagles Landing o uh, at Ocoee. Um, is the owner and the applicant. Um, again, this is kind of a uh, isolated finger, a little bit of separated, well, a little bit. It is, actually is separated from the rest of the town proper, except uh, being its location directly on the Lake County, Orange County line, Town Oakland line, as well as being north of the, um, of the turnpike, it kind of winds up being isolated on that 10 acres. Um, the layout is for, I think it's, it was either 19 or 20 lots. I believe it's 19 lots. Um, your your yeah. north orientation is this way. <laughs> and uh, the continuation of the remaining lots for the overall subdivision is actually falls on to the Lake County side. The whole subdivision is accessed only via High Street and Broad Street, if I'm remembering the two streets correctly. So it is only accessed basically through the town of Oakland. Um, uh, just some examples of the homes and home builders. I think we had D.R. Horton and uh, uh, there was one other builder. I'm sorry, I cannot remember the name of the builder. But uh, they're- Hang on one second. Who's the other builder, Jim? Well, it's just, just like typical ranch style homes. It's just um, the important homes. Okay. And then they have a subsidiary, Emerald Homes, which is a, a higher end. We're selling them some of the late front lots. And then we're retaining back, we're holding back 14 of those, either to ultimately go to Emerald or to go to Customs. Okay. Thank you. All right, Jeff. Uh, essentially, it, it boils down to uh, staff findings. We're talking 10.5 acres worth of subdivision that is in the town of Oakland. It is kind of separated from the rest of the residential development that has been taking place in the town of Oakland and probably will remain isolated for quite a while with those uh, properties that are Killarney and some of the other agricultural properties uh, east of J.W. Jones that may not be coming into the, the municipality anytime soon. So we won't really have a lot else that's going to apply to the design district. Um, kind of boiling that down with the larger balance of the subdivision and the, the, the single home builder basically being in Lake County. Um, staff took a look at it and said, you know, based on its isolation, it is a reasonable request for the developer to make um, the overall impact of the design uh, to the Town of Oakland's character will, is pretty much negligible then, because of its location and isolation. Variance Review Board heard the uh, proposed variance on June 6th. The Planning and Zoning Board heard it on June 16th. Both recommended approval of the variance request. Um, this is up for, uh, for your action to accept it, to accept their findings, I guess. <laughs> We have um, any questions at the table? The only question I would have is that, and I understand it, and I, I can see where the reasoning would be for it, but are we going to get ourselves in a position where someone says, that's in the town limit, how come they can and we can't? Will we have a good answer for that? Looking at um, what we have for developable parcels on the residential, 
pretty much this is a unique situation with that 10 acres being, you know, kind of separated by unincorporated Orange County being above the turnpike and being right on the Lake County line with the balance of the overall subdivision, the majority part being on the Lake County side, it's a very unique uh, situation. So I, I think it's, it's very well to explain that we don't back ourselves into any corner with this by you know, setting some sort of a quote, quote unquote precedent. Well, uh, that's what I'm concerned. And this is being sold as, as a development. But all these people are going to consider themselves in the same neighborhood, whether you're on the Oakland side or on the Lake County side. So it seems there needs to be some consistency between the two. Mm. And, the, and the Oakland side is only about 18% of the entire development. So that's, I think, I don't think we're setting a precedent here. This is, a, this is as Jeff said, a unique unique situation. Well, like I said, as long as we, and I understand it completely, so don't misunderstand where I'm at with it, but I just don't want us to get backed into a corner somewhere because, you know, we've kind of got that same situation with Oakland Park. Right. You know, it's, you know, you got just a few on the Oakland side and the rest on the Winter Garden side. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we stayed pretty strict with all that too. Yeah, well, that essentially we're doing the same thing as keeping the same look and feel in this subdivision that we are, you know, that we did with Oakland Park. You know, it's all uniform. Now, is this something that um, we would be amenable to as a whole subdivision in Oakland? No, probably not. Right. I, I, I wouldn't even come recommending uh, a variance. I would, I wouldn't. I try to keep that from happening because, uh, but this is a unique situation here. Yeah. But legally, and we don't have our attorney here. Yeah. Legally, Becky, oh, Becky, I'm Becky, here. Um, Becky, I hadn't heard you, Becky. Hi. Hi. No, well, I've been the whole time. Even sure. for the stop. Um, weigh in on this one. I just want to get trapped into a legal sure. thing. This is this is not a legal problem at all. Okay, that's all I need. Create any kind of a precedent. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. Uh -huh. will, will this be the only entrance from here on, or there be? It, it, it is the only entrance in, and my biggest concern is in public safety um, because it's a lot of it's in Lake County, Lake County Sheriff, Lake County Fire, Orange County Fire, Oak, Town of Oakland Police Department, Orange County Sheriff. So I've already brought it up to as many people as I can, Chief Peak, uh, Chief Avery, making sure that we've got coordination on the public safety. Uh, but yes, this is the only entrance. And they are, we are getting some, I won't call them impact fees, but we are getting some consideration for some transportation improvements on those roads coming into the, the, the subsequent. Well, that and the fact that if we're taking care of it, because I doubt Lake County is going to be bringing in their police and fire, are we going to be it's, supervising that? We're, we've got mutual aid agreements. Um, there is a fire station on Hartle Road that's close enough that could respond. But they'll, they'll work that out between them. I just want to make sure that everybody knows about it. And, but we're only responsible for what's the 19 lots in Oakland, not Right, but, but if, if we're first ones there, we're going yeah, to respond. So that's that's the thing. I just want to make sure think, that- Because it turns out to be something like Deer Island, where we, we still respond, we're gonna fire, right. we, we cover them regardless. Uh, when it comes to public safety, the first thing is to respond. we right. work out the logistics if it becomes problematic afterwards. But, right. But uh, it is, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware as this starts to build out of what the situation, dispatch wise, you know, all of that, just to make sure that, that everybody, because I would hate for somebody to. And that other side is unincorporated Lake County? It's an unincorporated Lake County, but I believe the utility services are through Montverde. Hmm. We couldn't annex that? No, we cannot. Because of it would, it would be statutory. It, it'd be, at, we, at this point, no, we cannot annex that. Okay. And didn't we, we've gone through this. Yeah. We, uh, mm -hmm. we approved it. This is just a variance. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah this is just a variance. So, so the, it's, it's been annexed into the town for these 19 houses. Uh, we've got a development agreement. There is some, some transportation improvements that will be done. Um, and uh, like I said, we'll work with it on the public safety side to make sure that there's coordination and things get taken care of. Well, and I think the point I was trying to make, we always have mutual aid, but we are not taking sole responsibility no. 
for anything other than those 19 ounces. We're not gonna, you know, we're not the first person to be responsible for the Lake County side. We will, we will respond, but that we're not saying we're taking it on solely. Now, they're gonna respond by respond vice versa also. Right. 18 homes or 19 homes. Yeah. So the, the I'm sorry, your name? Yep, Jimmy Dunn. Jimmy Dunn? Yep. So the custom home builder is not going to be the same style homes built on the rest of Lake County or those particular eight out of the 19 lots or whatever lots you guys choose. Has Mike Morrissey, is he going to be involved with the custom homes that they built? Or is that going to be however they choose? And That's what this variance is about. So is Emerald going to do the ones that are on the lake on the open side? I believe so. I don't, I haven't looked at the contract right away, but the way it's structured is they, they get the right to take nine lots. If they're choosing, we'll retain 14 lots. In all reality, it's very likely that Emerald Homes is going to build all the front lots. It was kind of a business decision for us because, you know, we held some of those back and we still maintain some control of the HOA and the quality. Right. Again, what's going on in there? So that was that was just a business decision that we made was to hold back the lots. But again, I think they're going to have folks come in to their model home, and they're going to want to live on that lake, and they're going to burn through those nine lots, and they're going to be calling us to say, "Hey, I need lot ten through twenty-two on the lake, and let's finish it up." So that's what I suspect will happen. So I, I expect the, the the lake houses are going to be more estate kind of custom kind of homes. Uh, based off of the value of being on the lake, so but yeah, that's this variance is basically um, giving them the opportunity to build the houses consistent on both sides of the uh, um, both sides of the line, because Morrissey would have absolutely no nothing to do with the 102 lots in Lake County. Correct. So, but th this variance is given that basically given them the. Yeah, the ability to keep everything consistent on both sides. If I may add, it is all under one homeowners association. Yes. And in my mind, we had already said okay to that, so I'm confused by it. Well, in between when this originally got approved, we have since put the design districts, and we did not exclude this from the design district. Okay, gotcha. So that's essentially what this variance is doing. It's taken the design district. This was originally approved prior to the design. Mm -hmm. yep. well, like I said, if, if we think we can stand behind it um, with, with someone else that comes up and says, I want one like that, and that's in town, then. And I, I think our design districts stand for themselves. And okay. you know, any, any variances from that would have to come through ARB, PNZ, and, and the town commission. So you have plenty of opportunities to weigh in on that. Okay. And in my mind, the only, the only reason that we're doing this is because there's a small piece of land that sits on the Orange County side. Believe me, I get it. I mean, I, I understand that. I, I would Otherwise, ask it'd that, be, so. it would be a big fat, you know, um, you, you know. But I, I've got to ask that question. Yes. You know, so. If there is one more unique situation is in this entire subdivision, the entire conversation about the subdivision, both Lake County side and the Oakland side, has been going on for long before the design districts came in. We don't have anything else that's in that situation, be it a residential or a commercial for that matter. So, so do, do you have any more questions, no, concerns? I am good. Anybody else? Good. Uh, sure. Do I understand correctly that the only entrance is in the Orange County Oakland side? Yes, ma'am. For Lake County as well as? Yes. So what, and I'm sure you've all studied what that does to have. But... Yeah, there are some traffic studies. That's part of the, this roundabout that's going to okay. handle Got some it. of that. That's the other reason this roundabout is so important. And we were given the, some consi extra considerations for that too. About $200,000. Yeah. So there'll be some improvements to get into the, to the subdivision. And we're supplying water to the whole subdivision, correct? Yes. 
we got a wholesale agreement with uh, Montverde for the, the Lake County Sunday. Which would be revenue to us. Right. And part of the improvements that need to be made. So long term, it's probably. Yeah, it's water impact fees. Water impact fees for those 105,000. Oh, we will get. Oh, okay. That's very good. All right. All right. Did I have a motion? Do we do that part? Yeah. I'll, give I'll make a motion to approve the uh, variance request from the Popka Sound to exempt the development from the design district regulations. I'll second it. Okay. It's been, uh, we have a motion, a second. Any further questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thanks, Jimmy. It's nice to see you. Good to see y'all. Yeah, we still got some left. Sit down, man. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. All right. Um, okay, so we are down to town manager report. Parker. He's not the town manager, but he always has something to say. All right. Mayor and commission reports. So, Sal. Uh, no, I'm good. Good? Yep. Great. Just one comment on the, the avenues of Oakland. I can't remember, but I could have swore there was some oak trees that supposed to have been saved in the property. And when I'm driving by there, and I don't see any trees left at all in the middle of someone else. They, the, the trees that they were saving were all along the edges of the trees that they saved. And we added a couple more that were between them and Longleaf. Um, everything else they're coming back to replace as part of the project once the once the project gets done. They've got um, not quite inch for inch, but pretty close inch to inch replacement of trees uh, as the project gets finished. Okay, so it wasn't all the metal ones were gone. Okay, yeah, I, couldn't, because, I couldn't remember. Because the site work needed to do this, the, the, the plans never called to save those trees. And most of them, there weren't any of the big heritage. They were smaller, and then there was a lot of the, the pine that was in there. So that, that's what got pulled out of there. But the ones on the edge uh, were the ones that they were supposed to save and that's what they have done. Okay, thank you. And then we did ask that they plant some of the buffers back <clears throat> early in the project and not later because they like to plant the stuff at the end um, between Longleaf and Oakland Avenue, those two areas that are kind of bare. Uh, we did ask that they plant those early. So we'll keep working on that. Thank you. Okay. I'm good today. I'm good. You're good? Mm -hmm. um, the only um, thing I have is there's a call with Val Demings tomorrow night. I know Steve's going to be on there. She's having a virtual phone town hall, um, mostly to do with coronavirus. I, I sent you all the flyer this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I knew we already had it, but I sent it to everybody else. What is that just on the phone? That's just a, a phone call? Yeah, if you, if you look on the email, it has a phone number for you to call in. They said to call in like 15 minutes before it starts. So I'm glad to see that her office is doing that. Yep. Um, I, I don't have anything else. So, Joseph. If all hearts and minds are satisfied, let's adjourn. It is 8 11 p.m. Yes. We did better. <laughs> <laughs>